Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise, Lord. We lift up your holy name, O God. Your name is high and lifted up, O God. Your name is higher than any other, O Lord Jehovah God. We exalt you today. We lift up your holy name, O God. Lord, come and bless us. Lord, come and heal us. Lord, come and mend, O Lord Jehovah God, every broken heart. Even as your word goes out in the name of Jesus, come and take away every fear, O Lord Jehovah God. For we are no longer slaves to fear, Lord Jehovah King of glory, for we are the sons of God. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being called your sons. Thank you, Lord, that your mark is upon us. Thank you, Lord God, that whatever we do, oh, Lord God, when we do it in your name, when we do it in surrender to you, Lord, it comes out as a beautiful work of art, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for the empowerment that you've given us. We thank you, Lord, for the, the, the anointing that you put upon us. And we thank you, Lord, for the way you send us out with blessing every morning every morning thank you for your mercies that are new every single morning lord oh thank you for the beauty of salvation thank you for the wondrous cross oh lord jesus we could never ever say thank you enough we're forever indebted forever indebted and yet you paid the price and you say no charge no charge oh what a price you paid on calvary jesus Thank you that you were thinking about us at that moment. Thank you that at that very time, no nails could have held you, for you are God. And yet they nailed you to the cross, mocked you and pierced your side. Crowned you with thorns, O oh Lord Jesus, that we may wear a golden crown on that day. Thank you for taking our place. Thank you for being wounded for our transgressions. Thank you even for dying prematurely that we may live eternally. Thank you, Jesus. Today as we fellowship with the Holy Spirit, today as we sit at the feet of the Holy Spirit, may we realize, oh God, who we are. May we realize and stop taking ourselves short, oh God. May we realize and stop, oh Lord Jehovah God, oh, destroying ourselves with our words, destroying ourselves with our actions, destroying ourselves with the meditations of our hearts, destroying ourselves with our carnal thoughts, oh God. So many times, oh Lord God, we cut ourselves short. So many times, oh God, we curse ourselves even though we are blessed. Teach us, oh Lord, the Spirit of the living God. You are the teacher that we are given by our Messiah as he rose. Thank you. You're such a wonderful teacher. So patient. So skillful. So encouraging. So loving. So endearing. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. So many times we fall. So many times we wound you. And yet you continue to cover us. You're such an understanding teacher. Oh, Spirit of God, when we let you down so many times, you can see the reason behind why we are unable, why we only get so far. You know all our experiences, you know our past. It's written on the palm of the Father's hand. And because of that, you wait. Because of that, you don't give up on us. Because of that, you continue. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we thank you because of the way you are, O oh God. That you're not a God that looks at the lips. You're not a God that listens to the words. You're a God that looks at the heart. And when the heart is right, Lord, O oh God, you keep going with us, O oh Lord. We praise you, Lord. We worship you. We exalt you, O oh God. That even when you're ready to give up, O oh God, 
You are just on. You send your angels to carry us forward, just like you did with Moses, Lord. And you gave him people to hold his hands up over the Red Sea, Lord. That for as long as his hands were up, the sea remained parted, O oh God, and the land between remained dry. You are the God that continues, O oh God, to date, to make a way where there seems to be no way. So as your children deal, O oh God, with what seems impossible, we declare that we have a God to whom nothing is impossible. We have a God who sends angels to hold up our hands that the Red Sea may remain parted, O oh God, and the land may remain dry. And you say, walk through it, O oh God. We bless you, King of Kings. We thank you, Lord of Lords. We thank you, O oh Lord Jehovah God, because you are the God that told the Israelites. And today you continue to tell us, look behind you. And when you see our enemies pursuing us and we feel afraid, Lord, you tell us, O oh God, as you told the Israelites in the book of Exodus, the Egyptians you see today, you shall see no more. So Lord, today you're saying to people who are dealing with difficult business situations, difficult workplace situations, difficult farming situations, difficult ministry situations, difficult situations that are trying to defy the work of their hands. Lord, you say to them, look behind you as I make a way through this Red Sea, as I make a way where there is no way. Look behind you, the Egyptians you see today, you shall see no more. Thank you, Lord Jehovah God, even as I feel that is a prophetic word for somebody today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, you make a way and you destroy whatsoever thing tries to pursue the people that is not allowed through that way. We exalt you, Lord God. Oh, we know who we have believed. We know who we have believed and we are persuaded that you're more than able to keep that which you have committed to us, O oh God. To keep that which you have committed to us, O oh God. And to that day, O oh Lord, you who brought us this far did not bring us this far, O oh God, for us to be destroyed. You who brought us this far did not bring us this far to be mocked. You who brought us this far did not bring us to be ashamed, Lord. Oh, you will do marvelously as you've always done, oh God. For nothing is difficult for you, Lord. Your banner over us is love. We thank you, you've called us forward in love, oh God. And you lead us through in love, oh God. We love you, King of Kings. We love you, Lord of Lords. We commit all the situations that are represented here. We commit all the situations, oh God, that are going to be represented in the future, oh God, as this video goes out to many to encourage, to strengthen your children in the workplace is oh God to encourage people in the work of their hands oh God even for the one who's looking at their storehouse and wondering it's empty why did you say Lord God that my storehouse will be full why is it still empty oh fill it up Lord fill it up Lord fill it up Lord oh I see the harvest coming in in the name of Jesus I see the harvest coming in in the name of Jesus Come on, if you have an empty wallet right now, if you have an empty purse, just bring it to this place right now where you're listening from. Just remove it. Just remove it. And say, Lord, it's empty. If you don't have it with you, open your hands and just say, Lord, my hands are empty. That's a representation. Right now, I speak. I speak to your hand in the name of Jesus. Fill it up, oh God. Fill it up, oh God. Oh, I see the Lord filling it up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, Lord Jehovah God, I see emails coming in oh God in the name of Jesus confirming that appointment confirming that interview and saying you have been hired in the name of Jesus begin to just rejoice begin to just rejoice begin to just rejoice hallelujah glory to God thank you King of Kings we are ministering to the ones that are jobless we are ministering to the ones that have nothing to do we are ministering to the ones whose business seems to be shutting down right now in the name of Jesus we speak fullness the Lord has given us authority to declare it we speak Speak fullness, just receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I speak to your tender that you are put in a place in an environment where they're tenderpreneurs. If you don't know what tenderpreneurs are, this is about corruption. Now just begin to lay hands on that LPO, uh, uh, that tender that you're putting forward. 
Begin to lay hands on it right now. If it's already gone, stretch out your hand to us the direction that you believe is where you have sent it. We speak favor in the name of Jesus. We send it out with the blood of Jesus. We declare, oh Lord Jehovah God, that the enemy of cor- that, that enemy called corruption shall not have that tender in the name of Jesus. Lord, your children shall not have to give bribes in the name of Jesus. Father God, right now slay those giants, slay those Goliaths that have been used, oh God, to giving tenders, to meeting in coffee houses houses and swinging oh god envelopes in the name of jesus they are being flattened right now in the name of jesus they are being flattened right now their tender papers are disappearing in the name of jesus and your child's papers are the ones that are being presented now and lord jehovah god the tender committee has no choice but to give that tender in the name of jesus oh somebody shall testify i feel it i feel it i feel it in my belly somebody's testifying now in the name of jesus the corrupt are falling now in the name of jesus oh Hallelujah. Thank you, King Jesus. You're doing it now for your children. You're releasing the tightest blessing, oh Lord Jehovah God, for your children in the name of Jesus. Somebody begin to say hallelujah. Somebody receive it in the name of Jesus. Somebody begin to receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Right now we release, oh God, promotions that have been held back. Promotions of your children that have been held back. Faithful tithers, oh Lord Jehovah God, that give and every time that they give, Lord God, they give knowing that, Lord, whatever they give, it shall come back, oh God. They don't give because of that, but they give to the work of your hands. Father God, I refuse that the church would be empty. I refuse that the church, oh God, would lack because the believers in the church want to give, but they have nothing to give. Fill them up, oh God. Fill them up, oh God. Fill them to overflow, oh God. Fill them up, oh God. Lord, you know the heart of every person that wants to give into ministry. Fill it up, oh God, that they'll be able to give into the storehouses, oh Lord. Jehovah God, that we as pastors would not have to try and tell people, give, give, give. Lord, they'll have an overflow. You put it in their hearts, oh God, because they received a miracle, oh my God. You will speak into their hearts, Lord Jehovah, and they will minister, oh God, to that ministry, oh Lord Jehovah. Our King of glory, we bless you, Lord. We give you thanks in the name of Jesus. Come on, just receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. You're being called for interviews in the name of Jesus. Your CV is finding favor in the name of Jesus. The seeds you're putting in the ground are finding favor in the name of Jesus. God, release heavenly fertilizer on that seed that is being put in the ground in the name of Jesus. Father, release heavenly fertilizer, oh God, on the, the flocks, oh God, that right now are being in Terminated in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord Jehovah God, we declare strong calves in the name of Jesus. Strong cows in the name of Jesus. Strong plants in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, we serve a God who is more than neighbor. Lord, we speak to that workplace situation, oh Lord Jehovah God. And we declare, Lord Jehovah, that should your child find, oh God, which should the name of your child, oh God, be found in the wrong list, oh Lord Jehovah God. The chop list, my Father, my God. Father God, you're removing it, oh God, and giving favor. The one who has been faithful, give them favor. And Father God, if indeed the time has come for a move, oh Lord Jehovah God, oh, exchange it, Lord. Exchange it, Lord. Father, I'm even reminded, oh God, of that situation situation where we were praying for somebody oh god who was attending an interview and lord jehovah god suddenly they attended the interview and did not hear a thing oh god and then oh god as they were dealing with the issue of lord we have i've not heard from you as i'm planning to change this job all of a sudden, Lord, they were rendered redundant in a certain position, oh Lord Jehovah. And as we were crying to you, saying, Lord, how can they be rendered redundant? Where are you, Lord? You gave them the appointment letter from that other job. That is the God that we are calling upon today. That is the God that we depend on. So the person received many years from the last place of work and then received an appointment letter from this other place. That is our God. That is the faithfulness of our God. He's worthy. He's faithful. Just declare it, Lord, I receive it in the name of Jesus. It's not over until the Lord says it's over. In the world they say it's not over until the fat lady sings. Oh, in the spiritual realm we say it's not over until the Father says it's over. It's never over until the Lord says it's over. Hallelujah. Thank you, King Jesus. Glory to God. We bless you, Lord. We give you thanks, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I 
feel the Holy Spirit. I feel the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lord, you want to minister to your children. They have walked on this wilderness long enough. They have walked on this wilderness long enough. That's what the Lord is saying. You have been in this wilderness long enough. You have waited upon the Lord. The Lord is transferring somebody right now. Somebody has been waiting upon the Lord for a transfer. Somebody has been waiting upon the Lord for a new job. Receive it in the name of Jesus because I'm hearing the Spirit of God saying, you have dwelt on this mountain long enough. That is always the Lord's parking orders. That is always the Lord's way of telling you it's time to move to the next place. And we serve a God of elevation. We serve a God who takes us from glory to glory. You've been trusting the Lord. Just receive it in the name of Jesus. Say, I have dwelt on this mountain long enough. I have dwelt on this mountain long enough. Say, Lord, I'm packing up. I have dwelt on this mountain long enough. Don't go helping the Lord by resigning. Don't go helping the Lord by quitting. Just wait upon the Lord and he will do it in the name of Jesus hallelujah thank you Jesus oh it's a prophetic oh it's a prophetic service hallelujah glory to God it's a prophetic service glory to God oh I'm seeing the Lord sending rain hallelujah the word of God says ask for rain in the time of rain ask for favor in the time of favor it's raining in the spiritual realm ask for favor in the time of favor ask for rain in the time of rain what have you been asking the Lord ask him one more time ask him one more time with in this service. I release right now in the name of Jesus the favor of the Lord. Thank you Lord Jehovah God as your children are asking. I release it now in the name of Jesus. Father God thank you for using me as a conduit oh God. A divine contact to these people oh Lord Jehovah God. If you're watching this video beyond this day receive the same anointing in the name of Jesus. I see angels leading people to this video in the name of Jesus. Oh you will testify. You will testify. I know we're going to put it on our wall. Miracle signs and wonders. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The testimony that confirms this video, that confirms what the Lord is doing. Oh, I feel such favor. Oh, I feel such favor. The Lord says, ask of me and I will make your enemies a footstool for you. Ask of me and I'll make your enemies a footstool for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to tell you about workplace enemies. You know, there are people who, no matter what you do, will spread stories about you, will work against you, will work behind your back, will backstab you. But do not worry. You have a God who arises and scatters your enemies in the name of Jesus. Because when you're a child of God, walking in favor, walking in obedience, walking separated by the Lord, obeying the Lord, he arises for you. Let me give you a little story. Many, 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 many years ago, I was working as a personal assistant. And and um, I, uh, a cup was needed. A cup was needed by my boss. I went to check, Lord, just I rebuke that network that is trying to go down in the name of Jesus. You thief of the anointing. Right now in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. You have no place here in the name of Jesus. So I went to the kitchen and uh, I needed to get a cup because I couldn't find the office assistant anywhere. This is a lady who was so full of herself, always talked so badly and she'd been there for many years. I was still very new. So I went to the kitchen and I washed a cup and I brought it and I don't know whether she got into trouble but I did what I needed to do hallelujah later on she comes to confront me and starts shouting how dare you wash cups how dare you bring me get me into trouble who do you think you are and she's yelling and yelling and just causing a whole thing and I was fed up I had tried being there for her, I tried bringing clothes for her children, I tried buying her lunch, I tried all sorts of things thinking, oh you know love covers a multitude of sins. So I tried everything and on this day, sometimes the Holy Spirit causes you to just be fed up. And I felt suddenly fed up and I told her enough is enough. I don't know what your problem is, but I'm going to tell you, I am a child of God and you will not talk to me like that. I'm also your supervisor and God is a God of honor. And she looked at me and she said, mm, you mean you're saved? This is what salvation is. The way you feel so proud. The way, you know, and she went on and on. And I told her, my sister, I am just warning you one last time. 
And I want to explain something to you very quietly. I called a brother from another corner. I called him, brother, come, 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 come. I said, this lady is, is insulting me. Could you explain to her that I am a believer? And when you come up against a believer, the warning I'm giving is not a request. When you come up against a believer, I will warn you. However, I am protected by heaven. The same way that an ambassador is protected by, heaven, by, by, by the government that has sent them. And the brother said to explain, cool down, cool down. She said, no, she's used to it. In fact, talk to her. She's used to it. And the brother is begging her, please stop. Stop. She's given you what is called a divine warning. Stop, please. Stop. Heaven will come again. She said, oh, whatever, let it happen. Let me tell you. A week did not pass from that conversation. I kid you not. One week did not pass from that conversation. I'd forgotten about it. I just took it to the Lord and said, so be it. So be it. And suddenly I get a phone call that there's been an accident and this lady is the only one who's injured and her leg is broken in three different places. Her hand is broken, I don't know, in two places. And I get a phone call from her shortly as I fall on my knees praying for her. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. And I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. And suddenly she calls and she says, I am in this hospital. I'm remembering what you told me and I'm not going to theater because I'm going to die. Come and meet me. Come right now and pray for me. I want to receive this Jesus of yours before I go to theater. I rushed to the hospital. I prayed over her. I told her, listen, I've forgiven you and I'm so sorry. I've forgiven you. You want to receive Jesus? I led her to Christ and she went in to the hospital and she was able to have the, the what is it called? The whole um, surgery and everything. And she came out alive. Unfortunately, it's been many years. It's been almost 20 years. She has never worked again. She's never worked again. So it is only fair to give your enemies a warning. Yeah? Let them know what they're up against. But if they ignore, if they mock you, go right ahead and be like, was it Elisha who was being called Baldy? Yes. Be like him who was called boldy, boldy, boldy. People in the workplace have no idea what they're dealing with. There's the government of the earth and then there's the government of heaven. However, the condition is you need to be faithful. You need to be faithful. You need to be in obedience with the Lord. And when you're going into the workplace, consider it to be a heavenly assignment. And ask the Lord, Father, this one that you have given me, it's from you. Yes, Lord. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, tell me what you want me to go and achieve. And let me tell you, any companies that, that, that hires a believer who fears the Lord, who loves the Lord, is blessed. God has answered this company and sent a heavenly person, somebody from the kingdom of God, because the kingdom of God has answers. And so when you come in, let them, they, they, they don't need to know, but that owner of the business is blessed. By the way, let me tell you, one of my bosses, he says, tells me he's an atheist. I don't believe him. But he tells me he's an atheist. But imagine anytime there's an issue, he says, no, 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 no. I don't think that person did that because they are born again. And one day I asked him, what do you mean? You're an atheist, but you're the one who's always defending those who are born again. Explain that thing to me. And he told me there's a way that born again Christians operate. And there are things that they do and there are things that they don't do. This is an atheist. Or at least they say they're an atheist. I don't believe them. But that's the thing. Even the heart of the king who's an atheist will appreciate because you're born again, your faithfulness. They'll appreciate that there's a way that you carry yourself because you're born again. So do not bring embarrassment and shame to the kingdom of God. They will listen to you because of your God. The one they don't believe in. If you don't believe it, go and check about Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was praying overnight for Daniel. The one who had given him the dream. And he was so sad because of the trap that had been laid and he didn't realize the trap was laid. And he still was not giving his life to this God. He was still was not proclaiming this God. And overnight, go and read it. Overnight he's praying. I think around chapter 6 of Daniel. He's praying overnight. And you know, he, he's, 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 he's unable to eat. Actually he ends up in a fast. Because he's worried. Oh, this man that I love so much. I've thrown him into the lion's den. Oh, may his God protect him. Oh, may he be safe. And fasting in the morning. He runs and he leans over the cave and he shouts, Oh, Daniel, did your God protect you? Did your God hold the mouth? Did your God, or he didn't say the mouth, but Daniel says, Oh, king, yes, my God sent his angels and they held the mouth of the lions. This is an unbeliever, Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar represents a boss. A boss who will defend you, a boss who will rise for you against decisions of the company, against things, and not want to make decisions because they know you, even when people try to go behind your back to attack you. That is spiritual warfare in itself, where the Lord gives you favor 
with somebody who is your boss in spite of your enemies based on your obedience and purely who you are. Who you are. Who you are. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Spirit. Be faithful. Do your work according to the things of God. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it as unto the Lord. The rest, that alone is warfare. The rest, the Lord will fight for you. Battles that you don't even know that you'll hear about later. Keep being faithful. Keep being loyal. Keep on following the tenets of the Lord. Refuse to get yourself mixed up. And if you look at Daniel, when Daniel ended up in Babylon, together with his other brothers, um, uh, you know, the other Israelites, what did Daniel do? The first thing he did, he entered into a fast. 21 day fast. And he said, listen, I know we're supposed to serve the king. So you want us to be served with these things, you know, uh, the, the food of the king. Now, when you enter into a company, the best way to do it is to enter through a fast. Enter in, it sets you apart. And then what you're doing is asking the Lord, show me what I'm dealing with. Show me, show me the strongholds of this company. Show me the things that are causing the prophets not to enter this company. Show me those things, Lord Jehovah God. Show me the assignment that you sent me to. Show me, Lord Jehovah God, that I may be prosperous with you in the name of Jesus. And what was Daniel being separated from? The meats, the, 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 the wines and all those things, the fine things. Because when you enter a company and you enter into a new salary and everything, it's very easy to get caught up. It's very easy. There's something called an induction process, an onboarding process. There is a joke we have in the HR fraternity. In the HR fraternity, we draw camels. And I'm trying to find that thing. I've not found it for many years. We draw camels. And when you enter a company, the company, you're entering a place that has camels, for example. For example, it's an animal that's used. Everybody in the company looks alike. And the reason you've been brought in is because you have a solution. They are not looking for a camel. If they wanted a camel, then they would have promoted a camel from internally. They are looking for somebody who is different. So they're not looking for a camel. So they show a, a picture in the HR circles. And I want to explain something to you very, very critical. So they're camels. A camel a camel and then it's looking at a human being so the one who's been recruited is the human being you're the freshness of the company so when you're brought in you're brought in with solutions so the way it shows is a five-year cycle is it a three-year cycle five-year cycle whatever but it shows a camel day one of a new employee the camel is the person in the company the people in the company the human being is the person who's been brought in and then it shows after after a year suddenly the the the, 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 the new person has sprouted camel ears after two years, you sprouted a camel nose. After three years, you've sprouted a camel, some camel hair. And by five years, you become like everybody else. So you see a camel facing a camel. Do not be a camel when you are hired. Know that you've gone amongst camels. And remember, camels are fantastic because they even have a hump, which means they go for the long haul, even in the drought. Faithful, loyal employees. However, they are not taking the company to the next level. When you're brought in, remember that you're coming in amongst camels. Do not be transparent. Transformed. What will stop you from being a camel like everybody else? What will stop you is that holy fast. What will stop you is the fact that you come in the name of Jehovah. Not to say it, but to just say, Lord, I put my head down. When you enter into a company, you're being separated by the Lord by not doing what they do. Because what they do is what has gotten them there. Appreciate some of the, the practices that they practice. But your warfare of not becoming a camel that will cause you to be elevated like Daniel, like Shadrach, like Meshach, Abednego, all those people... That the reason that they were able to be elevated is because even after the 21 day fast, which represents a being set apart, which represents a refusal to be like the Babylonians, they were different. And when they came before the king, the eunuch was so afraid that he was going to be in trouble. But when they came before the king, the king found them to be sharper, fatter, wiser, everything. When you're separated, the king is the boss. The boss will just say there's something about you. They don't know what it is, but there's something about you. Somehow they know you have answers. You'll be put in a committee that somebody in your job grade cannot be put in. It's because of Jesus. You'll be promoted. You'll be given a new area because somehow the branch that you are given uh, prospered even though your branch never prospers in that area. It has been said that that area is a hard area. That, that business is a hard business. That thing cannot be done. But because you're a daughter of God, because uh, for us we just have to be productive, suddenly you will excel. Suddenly you will be productive. Suddenly you'll do things. But there is a job that I was appointed for and they had hired personal assistants for six years. I'm not kidding you. Six years and they 
they kept on being fired. Six years and they kept on being fired. I stayed for two years and then the Lord promoted me. And imagine the, 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 the person who hired me, the one who told me you're the first personal assistant to stay. How much do I pay you so that you can stay? Because where am I going to get another personal assistant who has stayed? Why would you stay in a place where somebody has not stayed? And this goes out even for the house girls, the housekeepers. You go into estates and you're told, hey, which house number? At 3B. 3B. Nobody stops there. I'm speaking Swahili now for those of you that keep on asking me which language are you speaking. Translation is, there is nobody who stays in that house. Why would you pack your things because you had that? And you're born again. Enter that house and prosper and rise and grow in the name of Jesus. My house girl, by the way, my own house girl, for years, you know, I would hire and they quit. I hire and they quit. I'm paying good salaries, they quit. I give perks, they quit. I'm like, what is going on? No girl is staying in my house for, you know, even... Uh, uh, you know, they would never stay for more than a year. They would quit, they would quit, they would quit. Then the Holy Spirit, when I had this girl, told me, and I'm telling somebody about retention now. When I had this girl, the Holy Spirit told me, tell her this. And I turned to her and I said, Lydia, my girls don't stay. And I don't know what the situation is. So today you're very happy, but my prayer is that you will stay. And on my end, I assure you, I will grow you, I'll do things. And the thing, the reason why people don't stay in this house is because you will be told that I'm very bad. You'll be told that I'm always firing girls. You'll be told all sorts of things. Yeah, you'll also be told that I've had two girls, but I've decided I'm not hiring two girls anymore. I'm hiring one and you promised me that you'll work hard. So you'll be told, yes, I have many children. You'll be told that you're stupid to do a job for two people. She looked at me and she listened. I told her, give me time and wait until you see my badness. It's been seven years. She's still in my house. I bless the Lord. And later she did come and tell me that she was told I'm very bad. I fire girls. I, I refuse girls food and everything. It could be that the reason why your house girl is not staying, your housekeeper is not staying, is because of the induction by the camels around the estate. Hallelujah. I think I've just released somebody to receive finally rest in the area of house girls. Glory to God. Back to our workplaces. Hallelujah. So there's the Shadrach, there, there are the people who come and they try to attack you, they'll try all sorts of things. I was shocked last year when uh, I did, I, I got to six years of working in the company where I've worked, where I have so much favor with my bosses and I bless the Lord. The, you know, my boss looks at me and says, ignore whatever you're hearing. I know you. I already know whatever it is. Just ignore it. It's just that you're young and you've been elevated so much and you're good at your job and it bothers people. And last year, one of the people who had been my detractors through the years and God had already told me who they were, but I've been loving them and I guess they were at the place of comfort where they think probably I don't know. And and, you know, I said, oh my God, I cannot believe it. It's been six years since I joined this company. I've never worked this long anywhere. Man, I love my job. The person looked at me and said, huh? You mean we've been trying to get rid of you for six years? I just started laughing. They will come and report themselves to you. Glory to God. But if if man lifts you up, if man appoints you, man can demote you, man can fire you. But if God lifts you up, they will try. They will try. The, the, the workplace is like Mount Carmel. The battle and the spiritual warfare you need to take is the spirit of Elijah. The Mount Carmel battle. You know, and the way the workplace is, is that there will be people that follow Baals. There there is a lot of witchcraft in the workplace. There are a lot of people that are sent into the workplace with the agenda of Satan, but you are sent with the agenda of God. What does that then mean? That means that it becomes Mount Carmel. Yeah, either God is God and so he sent you and you will excel and the company will excel because wherever we go, the companies excel because of us. But then there are times that a company would be shutting down. There are times that a company would go down and I'm speaking to somebody in Kenya Airways. However, by the way, I'm told in Kenya Airways, there is a fellowship that has been praying to the Lord and crying to the Lord. Kenya Airways could have gone down, but because of people who are praying in the name of Jesus, glory to God. But there I have a Kenya Airways blanket. And I, I, I got it because I told somebody, give it to me. I'm going to pray for you guys. I'm a pastor. When I'm praying, I'll cover myself with the Kenya Airways blanket and I will cry to Jehovah and this airline will not shut down in the name of Jesus. So there's a fellowship. There's a, you know, there are people who are praying. And for those employers that may be hearing this and they're like, huh? Let me tell you, when people gather in a fellowship and they begin to pray in your company, your company will not collapse simply because of that. Even if you're not a believer, let them pray. Let them pray. Let them cry to Jehovah God and your company shall be lifted up because what happens is that when a believer comes into the workplace, they are like Elijah who has been sent and is fed up of the bowels in this workplace, of this company that's not achieving what it was supposed to achieve. 
for whatever reason, for whatever purpose. And so the believers become like the Elijah that says, if God be God, then today let everybody bow down. If Baal is God, then let everybody bow down. And in the name of Jesus, they're able to say, you know what? You call to your gods, call to your things. However, if God is God, then still will I rise. And still you come with the solutions to the table. And I love, I love, I love Elijah. I love the Mount Camel battle. I quite enjoy it. And I love it when opposition comes. And, you know, I like telling somebody, I'm not very comfortable with being adored and loved and praised. It makes me uncomfortable because I could be taking the glory of God. But opposition, I know. Opposition is not one of the things that brings me down. In fact, when opposition comes, I say, woohoo, Mount Camel battle. Let them cry out to their gods. Let them cry out to the demons that are trying to call them up. Let them cry out to whatever it is. As for me, I will serve the Lord. As for me, I'll accomplish my mission. As for me, I will do what my God called me. And I will cry out to my God. And the Lord will ignite everything that doesn't glorify him. And the company will rise. And the company will grow. And I'll look at the smile upon my boss as he enters into rest. Because God has sent me there to serve as a servant. And I will serve. And I will serve like Joseph served. Remember Joseph, um, arrested, taken as a slave. But he knew who he was. So he's made a houseboy. He's made a houseboy. And Joseph shines those floors, man, until we can see his reflection. And that's how a believer is supposed to be. That is your warfare. Do your work so perfectly that your boss will ask to see who you are. You are a junior, but the boss will say, hey, this was done by who? And don't worry. Sometimes there'll be situations where you will do your work and there are bosses in between that will keep on presenting that work as though it's their work. I will tell you about a situation like that. I did that for the longest time in different places, but the Lord elevates you when the time comes and you know what God does with such bosses the moment that you step out like this the Lord begins to expose that boss and you'll only hear in a very short time that boss's contract was never renewed that boss was fired and I know we don't rejoice in such things because we pray and we cry to the Lord but justice is coming you just do your job let them continue to steal your powerpoint let them continue to steal your thing you remain faithful to the Lord you remain holy before God do not whine about your boss your warfare is in faith your warfare is in crying out to the Lord. Your warfare is in covering the shame of your boss because we cover the shame of our bosses. That's why we are paid. That's why we're taken there. Cover them, cover them, cover them. Pray for them to give their lives to Christ. Minister to them. And when they tell you, man, that presentation was so nice. You know the way they tell you, Kando, on the side. Yeah, Kando is on the side. They tell you on the side, oh, that presentation was so nice. But in the bottom, they present it as, they, they're told it was so nice. They don't say so and so made it. Eh? They say, oh, thank you, thank you. Mm, I'm, yeah, I'm humbled. Yeah, but it's yours. It's okay. The Lord will ensure that that work is known. Remember the word of God says that your gift will make way for you before the king. So many bosses already know who the strong person is. I'll tell you, I'm a HR director. I hear my boss saying, I know, I know that that person is the backbone of the department. I'm like, oh, you knew that? I didn't know you knew that. Yes. They know, the bosses know. They might not acknowledge you. Maybe you may be, but then sometimes it's that maybe you are very, very gifted at what you do, but you have zero people skills or you have zero leadership skills. Can you go back to school? Can you go back to school? Can you learn from your boss so that instead of, of complaining and saying, oh, I'm done doing the work, rigorously take, take, take the notes. And you know, when you attend their, their presentation, take notes and notes. Hey, okay, all right. They were not worried. They were not scared. Learn, learn under the shadow of the person that God has given you until you are exposed. And then when the boss goes away and you're given an opportunity to hold forth, don't start asking for acting allowance. Don't start asking for bonuses. This is your moment to present, not to play your boss. Not to mess up your boss because that is a bad heart. But it's your moment even to present that which you've been wishing that you could present and for it to show and for the boss to say, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, may we learn, guys. May we learn. May we learn there are so many things that we don't receive because we don't learn. We don't learn to serve. And that God's tenet is that if you do not serve, you cannot be served. Um, if you're not faithful with little, you'll not be given more. It's all in the word of God. Be faithful. 
Be faithful, be faithful, be faithful, and pray for the company. Pray even for that person who persecutes you. We are told to love and to pray for those who persecute us. And, you know, be kind, carry your love, share it with that same person you know who's backstabbing you. You know, ask God, how do I love them? And by the way, you know, one of the things I've come to learn is when you know who your detractors are, the easiest way to love them, you're not going to love them by your own strength. You're not. Because the way, you know, the way we are through our carnal minds is if somebody is, 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 is hates you, even you hate them back or at least you withdraw or, you know, you show them even you, you are important and all that. That is the carnal way. Now, let me tell you how to love your enemies. You pray for them. You pray for them. Go before God and say, Lord, I choose to forgive this person in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for them right now. Lord, I see so much unhappiness because for somebody to, to, to do this to someone else, they must be unhappy. God, whatever wound is there, Lord, won't you just help them, oh God? Won't you come through and heal them, oh God? Won't you give them joy, Lord? Won't you give them the salvation that I have found in the name of Jesus? And then you know what happens? God begins to fill you with love. And then you know what more happens? When you're faithful about praying about something, God gives you information. He can trust you with information. So suddenly God will tell you, oh, you know they're having marriage issues. Oh, you know they're orphans. Oh, you know, uh, you know they were demoted or whatever it is. Oh, you know they feel threatened or whatever. The Lord tells you and you're able to love them and to assure them and to encourage them. And you'll find, by the way, you'll even help them with their work. And then they shine. Then they realize you're not even a threat to them. Yeah, You're not a threat to them. Instead of backstabbing them, talking badly about them in the background, let them hear that you said such amazing things about them because people are very good at spreading rumors and spreading stories and everything. Let them know. Let them see. Love people into the kingdom of God. Love people into the kingdom of God. But there's sometimes you're sent purely to the workplace or into a farm, into an organization, into a business so that you may encounter people and pray for them, so that you may receive information and pray for people into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I want to just speak to the farmers a little bit. Uh, farmers, um, in the... In the uh, during the Azusa revival, you may want to just Google this. During the Azusa revival, there were farmers um, who were around the area of Los Angeles and they were faithful going to church. Going to church. I want to ask you also to listen to this for the sake of somebody else, to encourage them, to minister to them as well. If you're not a farmer, just listen. You never know, the Lord could also be sending you into farming. Yesterday I gave an example of a guy who a cloud has had been appearing over his land and it's been raining purely over his land. If you've not watched part one, you need to watch part one, which we did yesterday. Um, yeah, hallelujah. Glory to God, 1st of February. Yeah, so um, this Azusa church, they were very faithful, praying for revival, crying to God for revival, meeting and crying to God for revival. By the way, if you're in Kenya and you want to cry to God for revival, you're willing to meet up and pray to God for revival, please just let me know that you're willing. I'm, I'm trying to gather people together. Just we gather together and we just cry to God for revival in our nation. It will need us to meet, yeah? So we're not going to do just virtual and WhatsApp. We need to gather and cry to God for revival. Amen, if you're one such person. So... Uh, these guys were praying to God for revival and revival began to fall and they were going to this Azusa church and around the same time uh, there was an attack of, uh, I don't know whether it was army worms or locusts, I think it was army worms and they were sent, they, they came down eh? and you know some of these things sometimes come from God by the way, eh? so as you're busy binding and casting and everything, sometimes they come from God if you don't believe me, go and read uh, Deuteronomy 28, the curses, it says that God will send upon you this and that and the other until you are destroyed, until you are dead yes, God sends curses and God sends things it's not always from the devil so these army worms come and this was one of the miracles that was noted during the azusa revival and they came and they ate and they ate and they ate and no matter what the government was trying to do those things ate and they finished within no time they had eaten the fields crazy stuff eh? those things are crazy however there were patches that were left so people got out and they went to check which patches are these that are left? And people are asking, which pesticide do you use? Uh, what, what do you use? What do you do? And all that. And you know what they realize? All the farms that had not been touched. Not touched at all. Not touched at all. At all. Not a leaf. Nothing. As in they've eaten here, they've eaten there, they've eaten there. It's been left alone. All those people were members of the Azusa church that had been praying and crying to the Lord for the revival. The Lord promises to rebuke the devourer. The Lord will rebuke the devourer in things like what? You will forget something somewhere where there is no way you could ever have found it. I forgot my laptop, my iPad in JKIA. Seriously, for like 20 minutes. 
I'm talking on the phone, encouraging a sister, praying with her and all that. Then I walked around blessing the Lord for the prophecy that had come through. And then all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit tells me, you forgot your iPad. And I ran downstairs, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. You're working at International Airport. And I'm just saying, Lord, I'm a titan. Then I sent a message to intercessors, for the, the women intercessors, daughters of Elohim. And man, these women are fiery. They said, sending how dare the devil, oh, you cannot, you will not. <laughs> I was like, man, I don't even need to pray. These guys are on it, man. They are on it. Let me tell you, I got there, I stood there. And they were like, hey, 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 I think it was stolen by so-and-so. I think it was stolen by so-and-so. But let me tell you, that iPad had not moved. Somebody had stacked something on top of it. It didn't break. But as they unstacked, they found it right there, protected and shielded. There are, it, it is not easy to be faithful. It is not easy to, to obey God. By the way, the only way you're going to obey God and keep his commandments and the only way that you're going to be faithful and not move to the left or to the right if you stay in prayer. You need to be drunk a little bit with the Holy Spirit, enough to look at money, one million shillings and someone's trying to bribe you and say, no, I am a Christian, I'll not do it. Knowing very well that your back balance is negative. Knowing very well that you have a letter of eviction. Knowing very well that you have something. It takes God. It takes being filled with the Holy Spirit, either that or discipline. By the way, it's not grace. Grace without discipline is dangerous. You need discipline. But also the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you say, you know what? I'm not going to grieve the Lord. I'm not going to grieve the Lord. It takes the grace of God to be told by somebody when you're looking for a job, you've been jobless. And somebody tells you, calls you and tells you, ah, oh, so-and-so, yeah. I'm so-and-so, the general manager or, you know, the MD of this and this company. And uh, you've probably heard about them, so you know they are and they have authority. And they tell you, well, I'm looking over your CV, but can I meet you in a hotel to discuss it further? And you know very well they want to sleep with you. It takes the grace of God to say, I am a Christian. I will not meet you at that hotel. And even as they're saying, oh, no, 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 no. That's not what I meant. Oh, you know, you can't get a job unless. It takes the grace of God to say, I am not going to sleep my way into a job. As for me and my God. And it, the, the beauty with that is, remember Shadrach, uh, Meshach and Abednego being told, if you bow, I will spare you. And this is one of my favorite scriptures where they say, O oh, king, we need not answer you on this matter because our God is more than able to protect us. We will not, uh, our God is more than able to protect us from the fiery furnace. But even if he doesn't, meaning even if I die, God is able. But even if he doesn't, we will never bow to an image. It takes the glory of God. And do you remember what happened in that fire? Jesus appeared as the fourth man in the flame. And the king is looking and saying, wait a minute. Did you not put three men? Who is that who is walking? And I love the next answer. That looks like Jesus walking amongst them. How did they know Jesus? How did they know God? How did they know? This is the Old Testament. How? How did they know that? The revelation that comes from the Spirit of God. And then when they said, come out of the fire, Jesus did not come out of the fire to be seen in the fire. And here's the thing, saints of God, we will walk through the fire sometimes, but our God will be right there. Do not bow down to an idol. Because the Word of God asks, in Psalms 24, I believe it's verse 6 or verse 7, it says, Who shall ascend? Who shall rise to the hill of the Lord? But he who has clean hands, you cannot dutify your hands by receiving bribes. You cannot dutify your hands by doing funny things. You cannot dutify your hands by making the wrong decisions because you want to get vengeance. You cannot dutify your hands in any form, shape, or manner. He who has clean hands, he who has a pure heart, and who does not bow down to an idol or swear deceitfully. Swear deceitfully. Those are the conditions of ascending to the presence of God, to the heel of God. And what happens then when they are told, come out? They come out. And I love this scripture because it, it really by the portrays the workplace. Seriously. You go through things. You go through things. But when you come out, people are trying to sniff. Are you hurt? Are you feeling bad? Have you seen what we said? Do you know what we think about you? Wait until... And they cannot smell fire. They cannot smell any smoke. 
you will not be harmed, but also there shall be no sign of what you've gone through because God will continue to keep you in purity before him so that by the blood of Jesus, he may continue to elevate you. And when your work is done, you will do what I did in that one company that I was telling you about yesterday. And he'll tell you, well done. I'm sending you to your next assignment. God bless you. I love you. And if you don't have a job, we have just prayed at the beginning. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Joblessness is not your portion. And if somebody gives you anything and tells you, oh, this is your rent, can you please remove 10% and give it to the Lord? Because it's money you've received, even though it's not enough for the rent. Don't worry about it. Be a faithful tither. Be a faithful tither. If you're concerned, maybe your pastor's getting richer. If you're concerned that there are no missions that are being used into, ask the Lord. And by the way, always ask the Lord when you should take. Always ask the Lord and give to the work of God. Hallelujah. God bless you. We are more than happy to receive people who are not necessarily able to come to our church, but are able to tithe into, now, into, into Sozo Church of God and will be able to use the tithe according to the work of God. Ask the Lord. Don't say you're not tithing because you're not going to church and yet you're watching this video. This is church. Let the Lord use you. And by the way, very soon we will announce the things that we need um, support on. Very, very soon. We are setting up, um, we have a ministry called Heal the Land. Heal the land feeds people who cannot afford to feed themselves. Normally for that we ask for grains. Uh, we used to ask for bread and God bless you if you used to give us bread when we were at Globe Cinema Roundabout. Down there we used to go to the river and just feed the people until the Lord told us it's not very safe at this point because the people who are feeding moved and you know another colony took over. But we want to restart it. And in this case we'll be asking for grains. We'll be asking for flour. We'll be asking. So if you think that Pastor Kathy is going to get rich because you gave money, I want to say like Abraham, do not bring me your money. Lest you, you show off and say, oh, you know, I'm the one who made her rich. My God is the one who makes me rich. Hallelujah. So you can bring grain, you can bring flour. Um, we're also getting ready to go to Nakuru, you can bring clothes. Uh, for those of you that don't have clothes that are not being used, we have our Nakuru mission. When is our Nakuru mission? Is it 18th? When is it? Was it 11th? Okay, uh, our ministry assistant is just checking when the Nakuru mission is, and by the way, you can join us. We're going to Nakuru, we want to meet these women who are widows, and they have children, so bring children's clothes. We have a whole bunch that we got in December. You can also bring pads. Imagine they don't have pads, so you can buy if you're struggling. What date is it? 11th, Saturday the 11th. So Saturday the 11th, we are going to Nakuru. Um, Nakuru for Jesus. Glory to God. We'll be meeting these women. We have our sister on the other side who is um, uh, hosting us. Lynette is saying 18th. I, I think there's something clashing with the 11th. I don't know what it is. Lynette, what is clashing with Nakuru is 18th. Yes, Nakuru is 18th. There's something happening on the 11th. Thanks, ladies. God bless you, Lynette. God bless you, Jerry. There's something, yes, there's something on 11th. So we are doing uh, Saturday the 18th. Saturday the 18th, we are going to Nakuru. You can buy pads. You can buy flour. You can, you know, whatever it is, you can buy. And just bring it to the house of the Lord. And you will be blessed. God bless you. We love you. We love you with the love of God. We're starting a social justice ministry. Uh, we have a lawyer amongst us. Actually, we have two lawyers amongst us, uh, amongst the social church. What are the odds that God would send to a church that is just growing? Two lawyers. So we are starting a social justice ministry where we want to set up and to provide uh, legal, free legal aid for widows and, uh, and orphans. Um, and if you are a widower as well and you, you cannot uh, do, do, take care of yourself but you have the children and everything and you're having issues, we will freely provide. Um, but the poor basically, social justice for the poor, for the widows, for the orphans. So you can give it to that as well. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. We love you. May the Lord bless you. So Saturday 18th, you can also join us and come and see what the Lord is doing. Glory to God. And if you're planning to join us but you're not of the Lord, oh, wrong ministry because the power of God is so strong and heavy. <laughs> Hopefully you'll give your life to Christ. Okay, okay. I'm told that we have a mission in Kiambu on the 18th. So we've moved um, Nakuru to 11th, okay? Sorry, church, we hadn't announced that. So Nakuru is the 11th, yeah? We have a mission that has come forward. By the way, Kiambu for Jesus, if you're from Kiambu, please come. Let us go raise up an altar for Jesus in Kiambu. Glory to God. We're meeting the pastor and we're just making arrangements and God's gonna shake it up just as he shook up Murana. I told you we are going round. We're going round. Glory to God. God bless you. We love you. Hallelujah. Hey! Practice what you have learned. 
a Christian who listens and goes through their own funny behaviors of misbehaving and being unfaithful and habits that you have, you know, you know very well they're not godly, you're being unfaithful at the workplace, you're not doing what you're supposed to do. None of this will come through. None of this will come through. Then you say, oh, you know, Pastor Kathy did not. No, it will only come through when you're faithful. Faithful to Jehovah. Faithful, bowing only to him and saying, Lord, no matter what it takes, I will bow to you and only you. Even though it cost me my life, as Job said, even though it cost me my life, I will serve you. I'll be faithful in my joblessness, Lord God. This situation now, God, I will be faithful. God will come through. Some of us, you know, we come short corners. You get a sponsor. You get a, somebody to pay for you your school. If you're helping God, what's God's use? He's not going to come through. You're buying down to another idol. Let the idol prove itself. Then when you're tired and realize that it's just an idol, then God will come through. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God bless you. I love you. Thanks for tuning in. Share the video. Hallelujah.